Good morning and welcome to another episode of Stoke Meter. This morning we have the pleasure of having Gabrielle Kurlander. Gabrielle is the CEO of the All Stars Project. It is a New York based, and I'm going to read this one. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend that I know everything, but it's a New York based grassroots all volunteer effort and a national and an organization and model for engaging poverty through after school development. Now, that is a mouthful, but the impact that you're going to learn of what uh, Gabrielle's uh, uh, organization does is far reaching for those that are involved and, and, and the people that it impacts. So thank you for joining us today. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you, Maurice. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. And I use for sure because it is such a, I'm, I'm blown away every time I, I think I, I, I said something earlier on of everything that you folks are doing across the nation. And just wondering if you wouldn't mind delving into how this idea came about. I know you're an entertainer before and you're still involved in a lot of off-Broadway production, but how did this all come about? Oh my, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a wild experiment uh, <laughs> a little bit. Um, do you know, um, I think really coming out of the 1960s, there were people who felt to be a little more serious, you know, felt that the issues facing our country um, of poverty, and there had been a war on poverty, but that we just hadn't made the kind of progress that we need to make. And um, some of the, the uh, originators of the All Stars Project um, went into the poorest communities in New York City, um, and ask people there what they wanted and what they needed and asked them to partner with them and together black and brown folks, you know, leaders who were from Bedford Stuyvesant and Brownsville and Harlem and, and some of, you know, these communities um, partnered with our founders, um, many of whom were white and Jewish and, and created really a multiracial community that started to create some new solutions um, with people partnering directly with people, you know, in the poorest neighborhoods in New York. And so it was initially, I'll tell you the truth, as you said, initially it was all volunteer and mm -hmm. it was people who came from all walks of life. And um, it was trying to, um, just find something that was that was helpful and that moved the ball down the field and some issues that our country has faced, whether it be poverty or violence or um, you know, social isolation, um, racism, the disparities of, of wealth, working on, on these issues um, together. And over time that evolved into an organization that is the All-Stars Project, the more modern All-Stars Project, if you, if you will, which is, uh, is now funded. We're hundred percent privately funded, though we did get some PPP. So I guess that's, uh, <laughs> um, we were happy to, but other than that, we work with many, many individual philanthropists and professional people to partner with people from our most underserved communities in our country. And we now have a, um, you know, a paid staff of 60 people all around the country who are working with all stars, but as, or more importantly, we still have thousands and thousands of volunteers from all walks of life who want to make a difference. Yes. Yes. It's an amazing difference too, because having lived in New York for a decade, uh, you go to each of, of those different neighborhoods. I was in Harlem a lot. I was down in Chinatown. I was down in little Italy, uh, little Brazil, it, all those. So it's such a diverse um, amount of, of, of people. And what I love about what you're doing, if all you have to do is go to your website and go to your videos or whatever it might be. And it's amazing to see that all of a sudden it becomes colorblind. It becomes uh, blind to pretty much every difference because you're bringing those groups together. And, and one, one of the things that was said is that you're transforming communities one performance at a time. 
uh, getting those. And, and on top of that, there's a lot of career development that you folks do uh, too. How, how do you do it? <laughs> you, you started out as a grassroots thing, but looking at some of the people that are helping with, with this organization, we were introduced to you by Elizabeth Nieto, who is uh, the chief diversity officer uh, or, or, or equal to that extent over at Spotify. I mean, these are, these are people that um, in organizations or even in music, I, I saw something that you, you uh, there was something with a Grammy Award winner, Lecrae, I believe is his name. And he just getting that caliber of people to help because they want to make a difference. I, I want to know yes. how. Yeah. Well, as you, you know, we do all of our work outside of school you know, um, and it, we're after school and outside of school programs for young people from the most disadvantaged and poorest neighborhoods in the country. And the, the way that we reach young people and the, and the approach that we use is a performance approach. We use performance, as you say, I'm an, I'm, uh, my history is in theater. I'm an actor and theater director and, and have done that since I was a child. Um, what we've taken is taken performance both on the stage, but also in life and to say everybody can perform and create a new, new versions of yourself without giving up anything of who you are. You can also try things out you never tried before. So performance ends up being this incredible tool for growth. Yes. And why that's important, Maurice, is that you know, if you're growing up in a community that is underserved, is isolated, where there's not a lot of hope, and um, we have young people, you know, I, I just was um, hearing from a young person named Brianna who grew up in Brownsville in, in Brooklyn, one of the really uh, tougher neighborhoods in, in our country. And, you know, as a young child, two of her friends were shot on the basketball oh, course. Man. You know, she has another friend who's coming back from dance class and is shot and killed in broad daylight. Yeah. And the kind of thing that you go through, so the combination of the isolation, the trauma, and then the lack of hope and opportunity. So when you offer young people, when you reach young people like that and give them what they clearly deserve and should have in our country, you also need to provide like, how do they make that journey? How do you grow up in that kind of environment and make the journey to the mainstream of America, if you will? Well, it's not only about opportunity. Certainly it's about opportunity. We need a lot more of that. But it's also about the development and growth that you need to have along the way, the way in which young people are growing up in middle-class and affluent backgrounds and you know, every day they're having growth experiences outside of school. Their parents take them on family trips. They get exposed to different cultures. They do international travel. They, they're brought to their parents' professional workplace. You know, they meet people different than them. People come into their home and they learn how to shake their hand and introduce themselves. And so young people who are growing up in underserved communities um, don't have those experiences, just a matter of course. So what performance does, what's really kind of cool, is it gives you something to do. It says, okay, you know, your knees are knocking. Maybe you, you don't really know how to do this. But what you get to do is you get to perform it. You get to try it out. You can make mistakes. You can get it wrong. You can do it again. And literally in the All-Stars Project, we create these ensembles of young people in all of our programs. And we have a multitude of programs, the ensembles, and we have directors and so we give them direction. And so you don't have to give up anything of who you are. It brings everything of your culture, your history, your family background, all the differences you spoke about, you bring that with you. And with performance, you get to add to that and create new versions, recreate yourself. And wow. you know, it turns out that young people really love it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go ahead, Gary. Oh, I was gonna say, I. I... I really think it's interesting that you touched on something when you said one of the issues is isolation. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in the day, I did some volunteer work in some of the projects in Connecticut. And so often when you have kind of that dire poverty situation, 
all they know is that small little environment that they live in. And, and it's not just a matter of not having opportunity. You just don't ever see anything else. Right. And, you know, so I, I think that that word is so profound in what you guys are doing. And then when you couple that with the performing arts is it allows people a safe environment to try on different versions of themselves, just like you were talking about, yes. which I think is incredible. But one of the things that I would like to know, because I was looking, you know, getting some background information on who you are and what you're doing is you're ex like extremely talented and you could be doing a thousand different things right now besides what you're doing. Why is this important to you? What, what happened in your life where you said, this is something I want to tackle and become yeah. a player? Great question. Oh, well, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you, Gary. That's a very nice compliment. Um, do you know, that's, that's an interesting question because I think that I grew up in a, um, a small town, in college town in the middle of New York State. And I really was, my family, um, you know, struggled financially at different points in my life. Um, but I was also aware that I didn't know very many people from the communities of color. I, I didn't have any black folks I knew who I was close to, who I really was, we were in each other's lives. And, and I realized this growing up. And at the same time, I just, I experienced poverty. It even, in, in this town. So I remember when I was in um, junior high school, um, there was a boy, um, very, very tall boy who lived out in the rural areas. He was very poor. Kate used to come to school and, you know, almost like rags. And some of the kids used to like throw nickels and d pennies on the ground so they could watch him bend down and pick them up. Mm. And, you know, I have to tell you, I don't, as a young person, this just made me, it, even to this day, it just made me so mad. I just really was very angry about growing up about things I thought were wrong in the world. And I think I got into theater. I didn't, you know, I wasn't that great a student. I didn't kind of take to traditional learning environments very well. Um, but when I got into theater, I began to experience some success, not, not just professional success, but success, what I mean by is being with people and you know something you enjoy and that people say, oh, you did a good job and you feel that sense of accomplishment, right? Yeah. And so I think that when I came, I came to New York City at, you know, when I was 18 to pursue my acting career and uh, that was a big, big step and, and <laughs> there were a lot of hard things about that. And, you know, on the one hand, I was in New York now, and as Maurice said, you know, all the diversity in New York, and I walk down the street, and you just have, and you're on the subway, and you just have experiences you've never had before, <laughs> seeing people and interacting with people, so there was kind of that experience I had, and then when I met, I kind of met the All Stars Project, um, the com broader community, it was part of a grassroots community and people working to really change the world. At the same time, around the same time, I got a big break in acting and I went on tour with a Broadway show. And, but you know, I ultimately, I just, um, the one of the things that was really profound for me in the All-Stars is that it was a, uh, there were a lot of women leaders in the All-Stars, a women-led effort, and also a lot of women of color leaders. And there were a number of the women of color in particular and black women, including our founder, Dr. Lenore Filani, who said to me early on, you know, we know you're white. We know you have some growing to do. You have things you need to learn. And we want you here. We want you to build this with us. And, you know, that's just a profoundly moving statement and yes. i think that um you know there have been a lot of issues in multiracial environments in our country and even efforts to change the world um and sometimes black-led efforts have not wanted white people in them and and i understand that there have been a lot of different kinds of approaches to this i was lucky enough um to find a community in which the black leaders said to me we need, want you and we need you and we'll help you to grow. And so that was, 
that was the beginning of my journey. And it's just, um, it's been incredibly gratifying. I, I've had a, I've been very lucky in my life. Uh, it's amazing your journey. And what's even more amazing is the people that you've, your organization has been able to touch. I, I again, I, I go back to all the videos and such, and I know that a picture is a picture. There might be a ton of stuff behind it, but when you hear how it has impacted the kids to your point, they are true to themselves. But what I find so amazing is they're being true to themselves and they meet other people that are true to themselves and they learn from each other. And it's, it's very profound. It's profound watching that stuff play out on your videos. It's obvious yeah. that they have that connection. Um, yeah. And to add to that I, is, is a question. You have all of these volunteers. How has, how has it impacted them? What are some transformations that you have seen in those volunteers? Oh, that's, that's fascinating because I think we've really, the All-Stars Project, we've, we've worked to be a community in which everyone grows. In fact, that's, that's right in our mission statement. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that everybody grows. And so we have young people from underserved and poor communities and adults, um, professional adults, caring adults. That's, that's something um, we work towards. We want to create a more caring America. Um, we feel if we had a more caring America, a lot of the issues we face, we would make much more progress on. So the, the young people and the caring adults, um, a, 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 they come together and everyone grows. And that's right in the heart of our mission statement. And I think one thing that's important about that is that we need to move away from charity as a way to transform things. Charity, and I believe in a safety net, and I, I believe deeply in people who are struggling the most, you know, having the basic things they need, healthcare, food, a safe place, a home, um, of course. And I think that when we talk about really transforming some things in this country, we have to move away from charity to growth. And it has to be growth, not just for people who we regard as as underserved or disadvantaged. Um, it has to be growth for everyone because in some ways, while we're not the same, all of us are disadvantaged and underserved in the sense, in the sense that we haven't had enough opportunity to connect with people who aren't like us. Do you know, research shows that only one in five white Americans say that they're in diverse environments regularly. Yeah. So you have four and five white Americans who don't have any proximity to people of color, to black and brown people in this country. And that's a problem. We need to, we need to do some things about that. And that's one of the things the All-Stars Project is working on. So what's cool is our philanthropy, our brand of philanthropy, we call it involvement philanthropy because um, it's not just and only about giving money that we love the support, the, yeah. the, the financial support we get. Um, it's about, it really is about involvement. It's being in each other's lives. It's, it's touching each other. And so we have these amazing um, corporate partners, for example, you know, Ernst & Young, EY, the, mm -hmm. one of the big four accounting firms, they have been a 23 year partner with us. Wow. Through their corporation and their employees, they have donated over $4 million. And they have changed the lives of almost 400 young people who have been like 387 young people have been interns at their company wow. and have had their first professional experience and begun their journey, you know, out of isolation into not even whether they want to be an accountant or not. Some of them may want to, <laughs> and I do know some of them actually who have gone on to a, a wonderful career in that area, but it's as much about the exposure both the exposure and the tools that, so you can be in that new environment and grow in those ways. So then you can pursue whatever dream and have bigger dreams too, yes. you know? Yes. Um, so I think that the volunteerism we have, going back to your question, um, among corporate people, among people really from all walks of life who give of themselves what they say over and over again is, I got so much about out of this some of them even they'll say, I think I got more out of this than the young people did because it, it 
it changes their lives too. And as you say, people are both true to themselves, but I would say add to that, you have to do something a little bit different. You can't just kind of be, oh, I'm just the same as I am in my neighborhood, or I'm just the same as I am in the corporate boardroom. No, well, you're connecting with a yes. little bit differently and you have to do yes. that different performance together so that you can connect and grow. And, and that's what we help people to do. Oh, man. Yeah. Gary, I don't want to steal any questions you have. I have another one. <laughs> well, no, go ahead. I, I, I it's a, it, again, being in New York, I, I worked on Wall Street. Uh, I wasn't one of those heavy earners or what have you, but I, what you said about involvement really hit me because you were talking about how sometimes they don't have the opportunity. And Gary, you alluded to, the, alluded to this too in, in what you, your work in Connecticut is that they don't know a world that's out there uh, because and it's on a poverty level. But the reverse is true that I've seen in having been invited to many parties where you had ultra rich, <laughs> right? And they did stay really tightly in their own groups as well. And so when you bring up charity of, ah, here, here's a check, that takes out the involvement aspect of it what you're seeing on involvement is really where that transformational piece comes i can't thank yeah. you enough for teaching me another lesson oh. <laughs> because that involvement yeah. is so critical because that's where the i guess the infusion for lack of a better word of our differences comes to make something great something that's really right. transformation transformational yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, I think that it, it we got to work on hearts and minds, you know, we, we can't just, um, it can't just all be about data. I'm, you know, I'm fine with the things that need to be measured, need to be measured, including in, in the nonprofit world. Um, but really, if you're going to transform people, it's got to be a people thing. You know, we're, we're not a number and we're not you know, a scientific experiment, we're people. And when I think when people bring up their kids, Sometimes they need certain help and support, and sometimes there's testing that goes on. But I would say 99% of what goes on for parents is that you know how your child is doing. Yes. You know, if someone said to you, how's your child doing? Oh, my son. And you could just tell them, you know, you know, because of the interaction, right? So yes. that's what the All-Stars Project does. We bring people together and they, they know how they're doing and they support each other's growth and they make those human connections, even if they're from very, very different places. So we have people who are, as you say, very affluent and have lived narrow lives in, in certain ways as well. Not in the same ways, mm -hmm. um, not in the same isolation. And I think, I guess the other thing I would, I would say about poverty, which I think is an important component that more and more people are addressing now in our country is that there's a huge subjective um, impact of poverty. Mm -hmm. And it's the trauma of it, which I know has been looked at a lot. Um, we've particularly worked on the subjectivity of poverty, the shame that comes with growing up poor in a wealthy, such a wealthy country, and the ways in which you internalize that as something being wrong with you, your family, it's your fault, or you don't know how to account for the, the crazy things and the unstable things and the hardships and everything that's just not having food in your refrigerator. Um, it's, and I think that um, one of the unique things about the All-Stars Project is we've taken a perspective that this shame, it, it needs not to be hidden. We need to talk about poverty and we need to create environments for people in mixed company, if you will, mm -hmm. and young people to share what it's meant to be poor in the United States of America. Yeah. And I think in some circles, people don't like to do that. They, they think that's somehow, um, that's gonna be, make people feel more ashamed. But what we've found at the All-Stars Project is that in the context of, an opportunity to grow when people can come to terms with and young people can share what it's looked like for them to grow up poor. It's really a launching pad. It helps them know where they are and move beyond it and see poverty, not something that's so personalistic, but something that 
is a scourge in our country. You know, it's it's yes. it's an American problem. It's a it's as much a problem for the wealthy as it is more a problem, in my opinion, for for people who have privilege and who have have more to do something about this. And so just all that, the weight of that, the shame of that is just, um, I've just heard, you know, probably hundreds of people talk about these experiences now. And um, it's just very profound. And I think we have to be more open about this. I think that we are a country that has moved towards talking about racism more and inequality, and that's deeply important. Um, there was a lot of work to do there, of course. Um, and I think we don't like to talk about poverty that much. Mm -hmm. And we talk about violence, for example. In my opinion, violence is a outgrowth of poverty and the environment that's created in poor places that are poor. And so if you wanna do something about violence, you do something about poverty. And I there's not enough focus on that. I don't think we can just police our way out of the, these problems. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, um, something you said made, made me think <laughs> about this, but um, how do you help people from all walks of life understand more and come to terms more what it's what people are going through who are going growing up poor in our country yeah. so that we can all create better solutions. And, and as Gary said, you know, deal with the isolation that comes from that. Yeah. What do you think are the is the best way? You you you, you threw out the statistic that five in one white Americans don't have that exposure. How do we do better? How do we do better as a country getting yeah. getting both parties out of that isolated environment? And how do we start? You know, creating yeah. a some some crossover and some understanding because I. I I fully believe that exposure to other people and other cultures and other, you know, that is where the healing takes place. Yes. It, it, it's not in our own, you know, echo environments where we're isolated and we don't talk. Yes. Just, just from your experience, even outside of your organization, how do we do better? How do, how do we well, fix do you this? Know, it's, it's, it's great that you asked me that because when we were preparing for this podcast, Maurice and I got into a conversation. Maurice was sharing things with me about your family and about growing up a Japanese American and about your father's experience during World War II and the, the camps that, that our country put Japanese Americans into. Uh, so what a terrible uh, chapter in our history. And, and But you taught me things I that I didn't know about, Maurice, you know, that I had never heard. I love it. I just didn't know about... Or maybe if I had heard about them, I didn't, you know, personally have a certain feel or have had a conversation with someone who who lived that and whose family lived those experiences, right. you know. Um, that kind of bridge building, bridge building is a big um, pillar of ours. It's a big part of what the All Stars Project does. And I think our country's not only divided, and I would say in some ways we're being divided, by particularly in the political sphere, in my opinion, um, where there's a, an effort to divide us yes. and polarize us in addition to us being polarized. I think that's being actually supported, unfortunately, in a variety of contexts. And what the All Stars Project works on is bridge building. So we have supporters who come from every side of the political spectrum, uh, left, center, right, independent, Democrat, Republican, uh, non-political, you know, <laughs> every walk of life, um, every different ideo ideological point of view. And we're looking to build bridges. How do we, and I think that comes from s some kinds of direct exposure and interaction yes, the yes. way Maurice and I had. Yes. And because that's what, how you grow. And so at the All-Stars Project, one of the things we did in the bridge building area over COVID, since we couldn't do as much in person, you know, and we were really created a, some new virtual programs. So we created two new bridge building programs that were pretty cool, I think. Um, one is called Development Coaching, and it's a, 
a virtual program in which professionals or the two of you could do it, could volunteer as development coaches. And I, mean, you would, I am. Too. Okay, great. Great. You, I signed you up. Thank you. All right, cool. <laughs> so if you're a development coach, you come to a training. We don't just train the young people, we train the adults too. So you would come to a training, you'd get a little bit of performance, you'd get some tips on how to be a development coach. You'd, you'd, you'd be able to develop some tools to do that bridge building yourself, some new tools. And then you'd be paired with a young person who'd also been trained, an alumni of the All-Stars Project, a young adult really, mm -hmm. usually in their twenties. Um, and you would connect with them and you and they would have a series of, of conversations where you get to know each other and you talk to them about the things they want to talk about, you want to talk about. And these have been incredibly productive. Um, invite, we create connected hundreds of people, um, adults and young people over the course of the pandemic in, in development coaching. And the feedback we've gotten from the kids and, or excuse me, the young adults and the older adults <laughs> just has been so positive. So that was one bridge building piece we did. And it's, you know, what's kind of interesting is that sometimes in particular, the adults will come to us because they get a little nervous, you know, because <laughs> people get nervous when they do new things, right? And they haven't necessarily connected to a young person who grew up uh, in an, grew up in a poor neighborhood, had different, ex very different experiences they did. So they get a little nervous and they say to us, um, you know, I, I want more structure. Can you give me a little more structure in this development coaching thing? <laughs> You're like, well, so we give them some, a little more structure, but part of it is you got to let people take the plunge yes. to, to perform, if you will, improvisationally and to figure out how, what their relationship is going to be without it being structured or you know, that's what we do as human beings. And you got to help people do that who are from very different places too, when you bridge build. So development coaching was one of the programs All Stars Project did. The other one, which I actually had the honor of directly create co-creating is called Operation Conversation. And my colleague, Antoine Joyce, who's um, in Dallas, Texas, he's African-American, grew up um, in Bedford-Stuyvesant and Brownsville in the mm -hmm. poor black community in, in New York City. Um, Antoine and I, after George Floyd was murdered, um, you know, people came to the All-Stars Project and they said, you're bridge builders. Can you help us? We want to do something. We want to do something about racism if we're white, or we want to connect people who are different than us. And, um, and how, of course, everyone wants to do, you know, people of color, of course, also want to do something about racism. But sometimes the white folks didn't really know how how can I be part of the solution? Um, people who are from the people of color, people of color were saying to us, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure on us to have all the answers and people are coming to us and they're asking us all these things and it gets kind of exhausting. And so they said, can you help us bridge build? So Antoine and I created this new virtual program called Operation Conversation. And we've had um, about about 175 people go through it now, just in the last wow. year. And we bring together groups of diverse people and we give them some performance exercises to do and we set up some scenes, but then they're able to talk about what they want to talk about, the hardest things in their lives, what's challenging. Wonderful to connect these different people. Yes, yes. To let them talk about what they need to talk about. Yes. Well, uh, well, one of the things that you say, and you, you keep mentioning the phrase bridge building. And one of the things that your organization, I think is doing very well from what I'm seeing is so many times these organizations are coming from, I'm up here helping yes. you down, whether it's with funds or whatever. But when I think of a bridge, I'm thinking of, we're operating on the same level. You're bringing people together in a way that they are they are seen as equals. Like I'm helping you and you're helping me. I mean, I've never seen a bridge that is built like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And to me, that's so exciting is, you know, I am a firm believer that you have to meet people where they're at. And I think that same, whether you're, that goes across all demographics. I don't care if you're rich or poor or black or white or green or red. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. 
And so I'm guessing that a lot of, of your organization's success is because of that, is you're, yes. br- you're, you're seeing people where they're at, you're bringing them together where they're at. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you, can you kind of run us through an example, whether it's fictitious or whatever, of how does that work? Like, let's say I've got someone that's in a penthouse in New York, and I've got someone that's in, you know, dire poverty. You, you, you talked a little bit about it. <laughs> kind of take us through that a little bit. So um, a real trademark of the All Stars Project is our outreach. And we, um, of course, has been curtailed with the pandemic, um, unfortunately, though we've done virtual outreach, which has been positive. Um, but we, we send, we have multiracial staff and volunteers <clears throat> who go into the poorest communities in our country, into the south and west side of Chicago, um, into the neighborhoods in New York and um, in Newark, New Jersey, and South Dallas and West Dallas, and and go in and knock on doors and stand on street corners and stop strangers. Wow! <laughs> and <laughs> tell them about the All Stars Project and invite them to be part of it. And wow. then we go into some of the worst public schools or public schools that are struggling and. Um, or public schools that are doing well, that but young people who live there come from neighborhoods that are very un, very poor, and we talk to young people and we invite them to become in the All Stars Project. And one of the things I think is really important is that um, actually a, a sociologist at Stanford, Dr. David Grusky, once said of us that some organizations are broad and some are deep, and that the All Stars Project is both broad and deep. I and I think idea. what that means is that um, we have a lot of entry places for all for young people to come into All Stars because young people are in, kids are interested in a lot of different things and there are a lot of different people and so you might have something that's a leadership performance that interacts with the corporate community and some kids really want that but some young people they love to perform they love to do hip hop mm-hmm. you know they don't want to put on a suit or they don't want to go into a corporation. And, and there's just a million different interests that, that young people have. So we have a multitude of programs, they all use performance. So we say to the young people, here, fill out an application and then you can come in, you can do an interview or you can do an audition. And then the great thing is that we don't ask for grade point average. Um, everybody who wants to be in the all-stars makes it. If you show up and you, you wanna be part of it, uh, if you need to show up on time, if you're not on time, we'll reschedule you and help you be on time the next time and give you a second chance. So if you want to reach young people from the most underserved and poorest neighborhoods, you, as you said, Gary, you have to go to where they are. Yes. And then you have to give them things that they care about and like to do. Yes. Can't just say, oh, these are the things we think are, we adults think are important to now. I mean, what kid has ever responded positively to that. <laughs> I never did. I'm sure you all didn't. <laughs> you know, nobody likes that. Um, so some of the, so we have these wonderful talent shows and they're fun and you can perform or you can volunteer and you can be behind the scenes and they do the same thing that the school play does only unfortunately the school plays have been all cut out of the schools, right? The access to the performing arts is so important. We have a new sponsor in, in Robitussin and the Broadway wow. actress, Adrian Warren, who starred in Tina Turner, the musical, and they're sponsoring us specifically for our work on access to the performing arts with young people from underserved communities. Um, so, we, so to kind of complete my answer to your question about bringing people together. So, so you bring those young people in, you give them a performance tools, help them start their growth journey. They start to meet people who are different than them, who are on our staff, who are volunteering, who are supporting them, who are caring after they come into that for a while. So then with the adults, I mean, back in the day, we first met middle-class and affluent adults by doing the same thing. We stood on street corners and knocked on doors in <laughs> affluent neighborhoods. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Meeting people and, where they're at. 
And we yes. met them. We went to the Upper East Side of Manhattan and we went to wealthy yeah. suburbs and in, uh, in all kinds of cities in America. And we knocked on doors and, you know, you'd be surprised people who open the door and make a donation to wow. somebody, a volunteer and somebody who's committed, who says to them, we want to help solve these problems. We want to connect you to have you partner with people in the poorest communities in our country. Yeah. So they give, and that has evolved over, I mean, I'm um, employee number one at the All-Stars Project. I, I um, When I started, um, we were just getting this, getting the funding started for our project. We now raise about uh, $10 million privately, <laughs> annually. Wow. Um, wow. But when I started, we, we raised a very little bit, of, barely raised any money. We were volunteering and we, I got a hired for a little bit of money um, <laughs> to start building this with a, a lot of other people. But I guess what I would say is that, so what we say to now fast forward, you know, 30 years, 30 some odd years later, right. um, we have these major corporate partnerships with Viacom CBS and Hilco Global and Gilead Jill Sciences and um, RBC Capital Markets. And we have hundreds of corporate people who volunteer at these places. We have other philanthropists who we've met along the way. We have, you know, people who are our families who make billions of dollars who we met on a street corner and <laughs> when they made a donation and they're in, and who are involved to this day, connecting with people who grew up in poor communities. So we say to the adults, we're going to challenge you. You know, we don't need you just to be a mentor and tell young people what you think they should know. We need you to connect to them and you need to learn something about their life and they need to learn something about your life. And that's why part of why, Gary, we train the adults too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do things called host trainings where young people, the trick is, is we kind of say the young people are learning to host a special event. But we and we bring the adults in, but the adults are learning also, actually. <laughs> They're yeah. learning to talk to somebody they never met before. And mm -hmm. so it's um performance ends up being this great tool because it it helps people get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. You know. You bring you bring up another um topic in a roundabout way. Uh many of the interviews that we've had as of late have addressed emotional health. Uh, mental health, all that that stuff there, and there are oh, yeah. so many things that you folks are already doing to address those. Because we talked about stigmas uh, earlier on, and how those stigmas prevent us from really a, a, attaining our potential, because we were making all these various assumptions that we're not wanted. No one wants to hear it. This is a wimpified method of of trying to deal. And what you've done effectively here is you've broken all those stereotypes, you've broken all the stigmas and connected people that they help each other, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. You're looking at it from a person per perspective. And to, again, I'm looking back at Lecrae. What he said is, I came to inspire, I left inspired. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Going back to what Gary said, bridge building? No, bridge built. And <laughs> it, it was it was quite uh, humbling to see that. And I say humbling very endearingly because sometimes that's what we need to do is we need to realize that that humility is the best way to learn and to grow. And it comes from both sides. You, you have the bravado of uh, and swagger of someone from the hood to someone in the avenues coming together and they're realizing that they can learn perfectly from each other. Yes. And it's just, it's an incredible job that you've done. I didn't realize that it came from that level of just bootstrap all the way to where you are now. I can see why it's because you truly are making a difference in improving lives. Oh, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that, Maurice. I think that I mean, emotional growth and dealing with, you know, tough emotional issues. I mean, uh, many of our, at the All-Stars Project, many of our um, program leaders are therapists trained in, in therapy, um, understand those issues. And I think that that's why really the subjectivity of poverty has been something that we focused on because you have <clears throat> the barriers um, to 
eradicating poverty to doing, you know, aren't just financial barriers. There are financial barriers and um, we should do much, much more about those financial barriers than we are as a country. And, but poverty is, is much more than just a financial category. Yes. It's unfortunately, um, it, it has a deep, deep emotional impact on people. And, and, and so does wealth, I think. Mm -hmm. Not the same impacts. Yeah. And, and of course, then so does everything that every human being goes through in life. We, we're subjective creatures. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so what the great thing about performance approach is that performance is something that you don't need a separate emotional approach. Performance is emotional. Yes. So you can help people to perform and it, it helps them express. I mean, it's been said so many times, it's almost like a cliche, you know, that, that, you know, how do you help people express themselves, right? Be right. full as, as human beings. Well, performance helps people to do that. And it gets at those emotional, you know, things you're stuck about things that you don't want to share because you're ashamed of them, things that you, you feel shy about, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. performance helps you kind of get over that hump you know well and you've yeah. given i'm sorry gary if, I, let me i i it's gotten really <laughs> Go ahead. You're all, I, i'm so i'm so uh i'm i'm, I'm so stoked <laughs> we we just interviewed an individual named Stu goffman who was it was the uh creator and executive producer of a show called addiction unplugged and it's on a &E. And what he said really struck me. Uh, and he said that addiction, we often think it's a choice. And so I, of course, coming from or coming from an angle of, of yeah, it was a choice, right? I, 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 that, was my, that was my initial assumption. But what he said is that no, addiction is more about 90% of the time fed by a need to escape. And Again, I'm I'm just going back. I, I don't I don't mind that I am puffing you up because it's it, it's deservedly so. You're providing that healthy escape for so many. Uh, right. From from a white collar standpoint to the hood standpoint, it's something that you're giving the proper kind of escape. And I I can't thank you enough on that. Yeah. Sorry, Gary. I'm, I'm sorry for taking your question. Oh, no, no. I, I was just saying, I was, someone sent me a link to a, a podcast interview with Dan Reynolds of Imagine Dragons that just came out here just recently. And it, it shows in that interview, I guess he dealt with some severe depression. He still does. I mean, through his whole life, starting at the age of 12, he comes from a family a very privileged family. And he says, you know, I was very privileged. My, you know, I'm a family of doctors, dentists, lawyers, that type of thing. And uh, the thing that really stuck with me is the, the, the healing power of the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's incredibly profound what can happen when you allow someone an out or a relief vent or a way to express themselves out of their normal, <laughs> you know, day-to-day -day struggles yeah. and, you know, because people get, I, I look at it as so, so many times the arts, and like, like music for me in my life has been incredibly important. You don't want to hear me sing, but I mean, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate, I'm you know, music. I might want to hear you sing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it's, again, I, I love the way that that the arts are a healing mechanism they allow people yes. to to kind of either forget put aside or break down so many of those mental yes. and emotional barriers yes. in our life yeah. and well, so i love the, i love the mechanism that you guys are employing yeah well the the issue of escape i think or um put it maybe i put a diff another way like how do you give people different <laughs> pathways because if you, whether it addiction or violence or depression or um, people, if you have limited choices and pathways, and even if you, as you say, you could come from a privileged background and still have not been able to create alternatives for yourself mm -hmm. emotionally. And that just isn't something you've been able to do yet. And, you know, if you come from um, underserved communities, you literally don't have access to things, 
you know, outside of your neighborhood and outside of the, the limitations that are there. Um, I think that those pathways, I mean, we have people in our program who grew up and they say, well, you know, I was being recruited for a gang. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Antoine Joyce, our, my colleague who's on our staff now, a leader of the All-Stars, he talks about this. When he was a, a boy, he was being, some people were saying to him, hey, you know, he wanted to kind of get in this gang. He thought it would be kind of cool. He'd belong. You know, Community. it's an option yeah. for belonging in some cases and also for safety in some cases in communities. And then the All-Stars came along and they're, we're like, it was a little bit more like right to his neighborhood, you know, in the community where we did shows, talent shows and said, well, come and be in our gang. And it's hip <laughs> and it's cool, you know, but it's socially productive. It's positive. It's, it's, not, a, it's not about violence, actually. It's anti-violence, but it's not anti-violence by being anti. It's anti-violence by giving you something else to do. And, you know, you made me think about a, a philosopher who I have read a little bit about, know some about, actually from the theater, because I've been in some associated with some plays about him, um, the Austrian philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, um, who is a very interesting person. And Wittgenstein, one of the things he spoke about actually related to medicine too, but how do I get you to stop thinking of your disease, um, in the broadest sense of disease? I turn your attention to something else. So I think that sometimes we don't, Sometimes we need to delve deeply into the things that are painful and are, are wrong, but sometimes we just need, we need to do something else and, and have another thing to do and have the escape valve or have the new performance, if you will, to take us somewhere else emotionally and as people. And that's what the All-Stars Project, that's what we do. So yes, young people might spend some time talking about what it means to be poor, but they're doing that in a context where they're going to now go and do something else do something new, do something you've never done before. And people who are affluent do something that they've never done before. And um, there's an excitement in that. You know, we, um, I know for myself, that's why I've stayed with this effort for these decades. Um, you know, I, I care deeply. I, I'm a very philanthropic person, um, but I'd be lying if I said to you, well, if I wasn't nourished or if I didn't grow in some ways, I would have lasted decades yeah. working in this kind of work. And I think in the field overall, in the, all, in the nonprofit arena and people who do some of, whether it's in the ER or people who do some of the toughest work in our country, teachers and people working in the most underserved communities, we don't do enough to nourish those people to help them make sure that they're still growing so that they don't burn out so that they can keep giving of all of their treasure and talent and skills and you know wonderful humanity yeah. to to help change things and um i'd like us to do better in that at the all-stars project we've uh, worked a little bit on this we we have something called the after school working groups and after school development um organizing we do where we reach out to nonprofits all over the country many of whom are working with youth and we convene conferences and working groups to help people come together again and talk about the issues that face us, talk about what it looks like to, to work with people who are going through the kind of trauma that, that leaders in the nonprofit arena are experiencing. We involve people from all different um, you know, executives to entry-level employees to people, everything in between can come into an after-school development working group and support each other. Yeah. And it's free, it's entirely free, the All-Stars Project Everything we do is free, except the philanthropists. We ask them to donate. <laughs> <laughs> but for the young people, if if you just allow me to make me think of something um, there, I think that when our efforts to involve poor young people, young people from poor neighborhoods, underserved neighborhoods, in in all kinds of things in the nonprofit area, in my opinion, they need to be free. There are too many programs where we're charging a little bit or there's this kind of tiered scholarship thing where families and kids, I've, I've unfortunately heard of programs where, for, and I've heard it from the families, yeah. where they came in and they had to kind of prove that they had a, you know, a low oh, enough yeah. level of income. And yeah. it's just not the way we should be doing this. The philanthropists 
and the grants and things should be funding these things to the extent that they can be offered free mm -hmm. to everybody who wants them. And we shouldn't give people a litmus test um, to prove, you know, I'm doing so bad, uh, badly enough that I can yeah, have how, this for free. How yeah. humiliating would that be? Yeah, oh, yeah, it is humiliating, but I can't tell you how it does go on in our arena, and I think oh, we sure. need to we need to to fight for that. I think that that's why volunteerism is very important. I think yes. that you know I I think that the work on making sure people have a living wage is 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 deeply important in our country, but I don't think we should pit that against volunteerism. Volunteerism is a great American tradition in which people, and it's also a great tradition that that we we are bringing and and need, we need to bring to some of the more disadvantaged communities because one of the ways people are deprived and you hear young people talk about this no one ever asked me to give they never thought i had anything to give yes you know and when you ask people to volunteer you're saying to them you have something to give yeah. as a human being and everything doesn't need to be um, paid for to have value. You know, we say you have value as a, as a person because you're giving that. And that volunteers are a huge part of what the All Stars Project does. And we do it. And the young people, what they do is they come in the programs and you know what? Then they volunteer and they give back to their community and to other young people who are coming up. And that's just a beautiful thing to see. And they have special insight and and connectedness that they can give to the communities that they came up in that's you know very different than what i can give yeah it's that it's that multiplying cycle it's that multiplying cycle and just the the, the impetus that you've given for that i i i can't tell you how i i feel like lecrae i i didn't come with the intent to inspire i came with the intent to learn but I am definitely leaving this inspired. <laughs> well, you're going to be a development coach. <laughs> I want to. I no, I will. 100%. You say how, where, okay. when? I I will be there. Matter of fact, I'm going to be in Manhattan later in the spring, so I definitely want to drop by and Oh, and, fantastic. And do that. And yes. I believe we're staying right around the area that you folks are. So <laughs> Yeah. We're in um Yes, we're in Manhattan, we're in um, Newark, New in, in New Jersey. Um, we're in all the five boroughs of Manhattan, in Newark and around the Newark and, and New Jersey area. We're in Chicago, we're in um, uh, Dallas and in the San Francisco Bay area. And now we have people actually from other neighborhoods and communities, all walks of life can get involved in the All-Stars Project because of virtual programs that we have. Uh -huh. So anybody who hears this who wants to, be involved can go to the all stars project and you can see our website and how to volunteer and and you can get involved no matter where you are i love it that's awesome no i i can't thank you enough for your time today this has been fantastic oh thank you uh, thank you gary really thank you maurice really you. really appreciate how you are shining a light on things you know in our world that are positive and are making a difference it's just so important um that we get those stories out there so thank you anytime and and don't leave after we hang up here okay <laughs> and okay, we will, you got it thanks again